Lamentations Chapter 1 How lonely sits the city that was full of people! How like a widow has she become, she who was great among the nations! She who was a princess among the provinces has become a slave! She weeps bitterly in the night, with tears on her cheeks. Among all her lovers she has none to comfort her. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They have become her enemies. Judah has gone into exile because of affliction and hard servitude. She dwells now among the nations, but finds no resting place. Her pursuers have all overtaken her in the midst of her distress. The roads to Zion mourn, for none come to the festival. All her gates are desolate, her priests groan, her virgins have been afflicted, and she herself suffers bitterly. Her foes have become the head, her enemies prosper, because the Lord has afflicted her for the multitude of her transgressions. Her children have gone away, captives before the foe. From the daughter of Zion all her majesty has departed. Her princes have become like deer that find no pasture. They fled without strength before the pursuer. Jerusalem remembers in the days of her affliction and wandering all the precious things that were hers from days of old. When her people fell into the hand of the foe, and there was none to help her, her foes gloated over her, they mocked at her downfall. Jerusalem sinned grievously, therefore she became filthy. All who honored her despise her, for they have seen her nakedness. She herself groans and turns her face away. Her uncleanness was in her skirts. She took no thought of her future. Therefore her fall is terrible. She has no comforter. O Lord, behold my affliction, for the enemy has triumphed. The enemy has stretched out his hands over all her precious things. For she has seen the nations enter her sanctuary, those whom you forbade to enter your congregation. All her people groan as they search for bread. They trade their treasures for food to revive their strength. Look, O Lord, and see, for I am despised. Is it nothing to you, all you who pass by? Look and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow, which was brought upon me which the Lord inflicted on the day of his fierce anger. From on high he sent fire, into my bones he made it descend. He spread a net for my feet, he turned me back, he has left me stunned, faint all the day long. My transgressions were bound into a yoke, by his hand they were fastened together, they were set upon my neck. He caused my strength to fail. The Lord gave me into the hands of those whom I cannot withstand. The Lord rejected all my mighty men in my midst. He summoned an assembly against me to crush my young men. The Lord has trodden as in a winepress the virgin daughter of Judah. For these things I weep, my eyes flow with tears, for a comforter is far from me, one to revive my spirit. My children are desolate, for the enemy has prevailed. Zion stretches out her hands, but there is none to comfort her. The Lord has commanded against Jacob that his neighbors should be his foes. Jerusalem has become a filthy thing among them. The Lord is in the right, for I have rebelled against his word. But hear, all you peoples, and see my suffering. My young women and my young men have gone into captivity. I called to my lovers, but they deceived me. My priests and elders perished in the city while they sought food to revive their strength. Look, O Lord, for I am in distress. My stomach churns. My heart is wrung within me because I have been very rebellious. In the street the sword bereaves, in the house it is like death. They heard my groaning, yet there is no one to comfort me. All my enemies have heard of my trouble, they are glad that you have done it. You have brought the day you announced, now let them be as I am. Let all their evil doing come before you, and deal with them as you have dealt with me, because of all my transgressions, for my groans are many, and my heart is faint. For if that first covenant had been faultless, there would have been no occasion to look for a second. For he finds fault with them when he says, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will establish a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. For they did not continue in my covenant, and so I showed no concern for them, declares the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my laws into their minds, and write them on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall not teach each one his neighbor, and each one his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest. For I will be merciful toward their iniquities, and I will remember their sins no more. In speaking of a new covenant, he makes the first one obsolete. And what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away. Hello and welcome to Bible Time. We're in the book of Lamentation. 
Lamentation chapter 1. This book is about the deepest sorrow over the most horrific event of the Jews, written by Jeremiah the prophet. The land that was promised by God was taken away and completely destroyed because of unrepentant sin of the Judah. The book is filled with tears and sorrows and pain. The people of Judah has been taken to Babylon and Jerusalem completely destroyed. They were most miserable state. So even though God's justice and punishment was right, they asked for forgiveness in the deepest sorrow. And now Hebrews chapter 8 verse 7 through 13. There's nothing wrong with the old covenant, but God found fault with the people. It was conditional which was based on the people to obey, but people failed to. So God brought a new system, a new covenant, not written on stone, but written in their hearts. The new covenant is that God put His law in our mind and written in our heart. And it is not conditional, it's unconditional and produces necessary righteousness by complete forgiveness of our sin. So God is now dwell in the heart by His Spirit, we are righteous before God. So God has given us Jesus Christ where He dwells in our heart. So no longer we are righteous because what we do, but what He has done for us. He fulfilled all the righteousness before God. Thus we become righteous before Him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus Christ who came to us, fulfill all the law, and that, Lord, you have come into our hearts, that you dwell within us, that we are now your people. It is not conditional, but unconditional, that we are now righteous before you because of what you have done. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen.